how to install a through the roof flashing for an outside riser. This one happens to be inch and a, inch and a half, inch and a half pipe for 150 amp service. So I drilled a two inch hole, actually it's a two and a half inch, two and a quarter inch hole from the top. From the bottom. I used a long bit from the bottom, a long quarter inch bit from the bottom of the roof to drill up to find my position at the top. Then I used a hole saw after I did that and drilled the hole out. Sorry, couldn't hold the phone in due to drilling because my drill bit was kind of dull. After we find that, we go ahead and lift up this section of roofing shingle I just want to lift up that one section this has already been raised up normally it's pretty stiff and hard to move then we go ahead and position our roof flange our flashing over our hole and then you need to mark out a few sections Let me try to get this a little straighter this section here it's, this is the area that you're cutting out of the roofing shingle. And then you're just going to slide that underneath and it basically replaces the shingle is what you're doing. You're replacing the section of shingle with the actual flashing or the roof plate. So in order to do that, I wish I had a Sharpie. I don't. Probably one in a truck somewhere, but you mark it. You're lining this line up, and then you're marking it here, and you're lining this line up, and you mark it here. Same thing on this side. That line, this one falls out about right here. And then again, this is coming across right here. So if this line went all the way across, nobody's going to see this. So, all right. Then you're marking out that section that you just marked. And we just came down here. The terrible line, but it'll be okay. And this blade, I'm sure, is pretty dull, but it'll be all right because you. Is more scoring than cutting most of the time with the roof uh, shingles. Remember, we had this line up right here, so we're just going to bring that down. We'll eyeball it. I'm making sure I'm not applying a lot of pressure, so I don't cut the uh, the shingles underneath. This knife right now isn't even actually going through. Not yet, but right there it is. Okay. So then we go ahead and rip this piece out. You have to score this a couple more times. Again, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. See if we got a decent fit. And then this just lifts up, goes underneath here, and it's basically replacing the shingles that I just took out. Pretty decent fit. Yeah, that should work out. There's the hole. So we flip that over. Normally supply house, electrical supply house, to give us the uh, 
and screws actually go along with it. I have to put this phone down to get this uh, out of this package. Nope, there it is. All right, so they give us these two pieces, or this might be just one long piece in this case. Of duck seal. So this is what you're gonna put on the back side to prevent leaks. Gonna have to put this phone down. <laughs> okay, couldn't do it with one hand, but I pulled the strips off that came in the package and actually I just pressed them into the, the two holes that are here on this back side. And you kind of push that through, kind of pushing that putty in just to help seal out the water. Then this will actually go underneath this uh, shingles here. Um, and then in addition to that, I like to go ahead and put some roofing tar. We got different ones, but that is the one I normally use. The other two holes should not be a factor, but when you're sealing up roofs, why not just go ahead and be played on the safe side? stuff is really thick it's supposed to stay pliable keep that water out I'm just gonna go ahead and hit that again up top and hit this weak spot right there it's actually underneath the shingle that one won't really matter that much Let's see if we can get this in here because the terrible part is trying to not get this stuff on your hands. Okay, I lift the shingle up. I had to pull away for a second, but I lift the shingles up just so I wouldn't get the roof and tar on my fingers. This is on there. It's on there. straightening that up I'm gonna throw the pipe in there just to kind of make sure I'm in the right spot before I zip it down okay I just slid the pipe in there looks like it worked out okay went straight through the roof and down into the meter can I'm gonna go ahead and zip this in now all right got my hands free again so let's lift that tile up a little bit That was a good bite. This hex head screws, three eighths. Most of the time, I'll just use those two. We can hit this two more in the back, but. This isn't going anywhere. It's actually going through the roof, so it's already supported. But they want us to go ahead and have this roof plate for additional support. Um, there's no need to actually go ahead and put two, two more screws in these. That just actually opens you up to some possible leaks. So no sense in actually creating a situation that you otherwise wouldn't have. I'm not going to put the tar on right now um, until I actually finish up and tie my wires in. But normally I'll put tar over top of these screws, completely mound up, mound up over that one. And then also I'll fill in these, uh, the holes where I actually didn't put any screws at. 
And that is pretty much it for the through the roof plate. Let's take one more look before I close out. There's my meter can. There's my hole. That'll have to be sealed up, either with duct seal or silicone.